I interviewed Chi Ali, um, and what had happened was he had gotten an argument with his baby mother's brother. You know, the guy told him to suck his dick. He pulled out, emptied his clip, killed him. You know, and then went on the run and had to rob drug dealers in order to survive because he couldn't sell. You know, sit on the corner, you know, and sell sell cocaine or crack or whatever. Because if he got, you know, even pulled over for smoking weed, right. he's going to jail right. forever, yeah, yeah. forever. So, so he'd have to rob a drug dealer and then just hold on to the money as long as he could, sit in the house, not go outside very much, you know, until the money ran out and he'd have to go through that over again. He just he just described how shitty of a life this was, you know. And then he was on America's Most Wanted and everything else like that. Because you know, when you watch like Ocean's Eleven. You know, it, it's people think it's fly to be a yeah. you know to, yeah. to to rob people, and you know what I mean. It's like I'm making a hundred million, and I'm and going, you know, so like that's, and, that's, and that's what people don't understand is those that really live that life, if they had the opportunity to not live that wouldn't, life, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't. There's wouldn't nothing worry. sweet about that. There's no, you know, they call it being gangster. You know, and and I, I feel that there's a very thin line between a gangster and a madman. <laughs> a gangster doesn't take enjoyment in that life. A madman does. Huh. <laughs> you, you understand what? Yeah. So if you find enjoyment in doing robberies and doing all, then bro, something's wrong with you. <laughs> you know, because I know in my lifetime, anything that I've done was just because of survival. Anything that I've done was for the love of my kids, for the love of my family, for you the love being, of my being love a man. Me being a man, because one thing that they do not, they do not put out there is the fact that. It's the feeling of inadequacy that men feel when we can't provide because we've been raised and programmed to believe that that's a huge part of what defines us as men. Mm -hmm. So when you're sitting there and you're looking at your kid and you don't have the money to feed your child, all logic goes out the window. Right. Yeah, all logic goes out the window and it's like, look, I got to do something. Any means necessary. You know, yeah. I, I, I'll give you an example. and. I really don't like telling the story, but for instance, me, lived with my fiance and my, and my daughter. Uh, things were really bad, financial crisis. She lost a job, couldn't find a job for three years. I ended up waking up one morning going around the bank. And I can say this because that's why I was on Rikers Island for seven days. I got bailed out. You went to go rob a bank? Yeah, I went and robbed I woke up one no, morning. I robbed you the did bank. rob a bank? Yeah, I robbed the bank. Okay, so, so you went into the bank. I went to the bank. And so you had a loaded gun on you? No, I, I slipped them a note. A note? Yeah. You just said, give me your money or else? Yeah. And, I mean, and it, how much did you get? I don't even know because I acted on emotion without the benefit of intellect. So when I left the bank, okay. um, like all my senses came to me <laughs> and I threw the bag, I threw my jacket. In my jacket was my business cards, was my cable bill. And it goes to show you that I was truly acting on emotion without, like that is another, that was at the total other part okay, of my and, life. And you got caught, obviously. Yeah, I got caught. Uh, how soon afterwards? Uh, I got caught maybe, I was... I ran for like maybe four or five days and I thought about it. I had a fiance, I had a kid, and I'm like, I'm not dragging my family through this, man. So, you turn, so, you so the same in. love that caused me to do that is the same love that caused me to turn, to, to basically turn myself okay, in. Okay, so you turn yourself in and you only did seven days? No, I did seven days on Rikers Island. I got bailed out and I got five years probation. You got lucky. I don't think, I, I don't say, I, I, I don't believe it's luck. What I believe is the fact that I never had a record. At the time, I was working for one of the biggest banks in the world. I was a bank officer. Um, I was a banker. So did the you rob the same bank that you worked no, for? No, I did not. <laughs> so that's the thing. If I truly wanted, I could have went to my bank at 3 o'clock in the morning, opened the safe, and emptied everything out. So I acted on emotion without the benefit of intellect. Like, I was so... At 8 o'clock in the morning, I felt like the world was on my shoulders mm -hmm. and I have to do something. And it's a lesson for me for life because by 10 o'clock, I would have paid... All the money in the world to be in the position I was in at eight o'clock. Right. You know, so. But he's basically he's showing you that when you, once you're a man, there's no limit to what you what you, yeah. what sure. you will do to provide for your family. Exactly. Even if we move on emotion, it's just like same thing with money and violence. It shows you why 